accommodations to accommodate somewhere between 200 people and four. So, wow, we've uh, we filled out the room, uh, which is good. Uh, I'm glad to see it. This is designed uh, as a forum for you. Uh, you can ask me questions. You can, and I'll turn it over to my experts uh, in many cases where I don't have the right answer, and or we'll go find the right answer for you. Um, but this is this is uh, this is open for you. It's, it's to give you information to answer your questions and uh, and to provide some feedback so that uh, you know what's going on. So I look forward to hearing from you. Let me uh, cover a couple of slides on some issues that I know are already uh, on the plate. I also received some questions uh, previously over the past couple of uh, months as we've kind of gathered and, and uh, sent out notes across the lane. And those regard uh, AFES, and we do have some people here from AFES, and from uh, DECA, and then anything that uh, is really hard, we're going to give to Chief Fish. So I'll call him. I got it. Great. So let me uh, let me hit some slides first, and then I'll I'll have a couple of comments. We we do have some some big events coming up here at the base as far as construction goes, and that's going to be a modification to our ordinance, which will close down the south gate for a period of time. That period of time has to do with Jasmine Gate opening. We're going to make sure that is open. That's scheduled to open up in early February. We're very confident in that date and we're pushing to get it open earlier, so you should see that as well. Um, okay, great. Well, come on up. You can, you can help me out here. Uh, so what you're going to see as far as an impact is us uh, routing our commercial traffic through our main gate. And you probably don't see it if you don't go over there, but we have high volume of commercial traffic. And we spend time inspecting them, vetting the drivers, looking at the car in order to make sure it's all safe to come on. So that takes time. It's going to cause backups uh, at the main gate. It's going to cause us to change how we route traffic in. So I'm going to turn it over uh, to you to kind of talk us through that. And what we're going to give you here is our best course of action at this time. What we're going to have to do is the day of the next day, the third day, figure out if that's working and what kind of modifications that we're going to need to make. But I think what you can expect to see is a backup coming in to some degree. I don't, I don't want it to be huge, but it certainly won't be just flowing through. Uh, even that, as it does today, you know that between 6.30 and 8.30 there is a backup. That will be worse than it is today. To what degree, I don't know. We're going to work hard to make sure it's not uh, significant. But, uh, here's, here's an explanation on what we're going to do. Captain Frizzell with the Security Forces Squadron. As, as you can see on the first slide here, basically this, this path is how you're going to get to the east side of base if you're an A-teamer, if you work in the munitions area. And it will be L Avenue, taking down through the flight line over to Ordnance Road to get around the construction area. Then we marked and blocked off so it will be very easy for you to get in and through that area. So the main gate, we're going to have some reconfiguration uh, to get people on and off base. Basically, if you're coming up veterans and you take the immediate right to go in the right lane going inbound, that is going to be for commercial traffic. POV traffic is going to go up to Falcon Road and you will take a right and use the left inbound lane for the main entrance um, for traditional POV traffic. And also where veers up into the outbound lane, that will be during peak hours. So during peak hours, we have two inbound lanes of traffic uh, at the main gate with two defenders checking in each lane. And additionally, you also have the <coughs> Jasmine gate to use for inbound. Next slide, and that is basically what it's going to look like for, for the main gate traffic flow. Um, as you can see, you can see that. In anticipation of the active shooter exercise at the end of the month, this is just some basic safety and procedural uh, tips for you in your workplace, with your families, um, as you're going in and around the base. For an active shooter exercise, I'll tell you, we just got it. We just got it. So, active shooter exercise has now been pushed to beyond the coup. So. 
this will be presented at a later date, so well, everything he's about to say will be applicable, but the date is uh, beyond our election, which is in August. CUI is our uh, combined exercise, what was previously known as CI. So that we're looking at September or later. Colonel? Did you say we're pushing beyond the CUI? Yes, so we're now pushing that uh, beyond our inspection in August. So we're looking at a September time frame or later. Okay, good. Anything else? Some stuff for base visitor access that we've been asked recently with the changes in the past few months is what is the difference between escorted and unescorted access for the base? If you would like to escort somebody on the base, you as a military member or dependent um, must be with them at all times, and you will also be in the vehicle with them when they arrive on the installation. Um, and at the, during the course of their visit, you will stay with them uh, during, for the duration. If you would like somebody to come on the installation and have unescorted access, they can drive around base while they're taking care of your children or just having free reign of access. You will go to building 428 uh, during the week or on the weekends, you'll go to the main gate and you can get them an unescorted pass. And what you need for that is you're going to need their social security number, their date of birth, and their full name, and we'll do a background check and then write them a pass for the duration of their stay, however long that you wish that to be up to 60 days. The reason for the background check that we're doing on personnel as they come on base is you can see 121 individuals since August have been denied. The various offenses from rape to murder, um, distribution of controlled substances, assault, etc. So these processes have been put in place to keep you secure and safe, keep your family safe, as you work and live on Alpha Center for Space. Brazil, where do they have to go for the vetting? So here in the week, Monday through Friday, 0600 to 1800, we'll be out at the south gate um, and building 428. Weekends and holidays will be at the main gate, uh, building 2000. So that's the small building right by the south gate? Yes, sir. Small building right by the south gate. That's all I have. Okay, so any more questions about traffic flow and the gate situation? Did that explain to you? What is, what is the anticipated date for this to start? First week in March through about the middle of September. Okay, so first week in March through middle of September is what we're anticipating for this uh, new uh, main gate process. Okay, good group. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Lieutenant Jason Woods. I'm one of the flight commanders over at the medical group. And I've got a couple things that I want to talk about today regarding the benefits. A couple, a little bit of confusion I want to clear up and then also hopefully help you guys out with one area. Uh, right now, you are not allowed to take, excuse me, get back up. About a year ago, Walgreens stopped accepting TRICARE for pharmacy, free pharmacy benefits. So you took your, your prescription there, you can still do it, they would fill it, but it turned out that it was a non-network pharmacy, so you have to pay for it. Why are we bringing this up now a year later? Well, there was some information that came out right around September, October time frame that might have caused some confusion that we want to clear up today. Express Script is the company that runs our TRICARE benefit. So if you take your, your prescription off base to one of the uh, local areas, Express Script is actually the company that does it. Well, they quit doing business with Walgreens last January. In September, the press came out that they were back in business again. Start, they're working together again. Well, it turns out that as part of that deal, TRICARE is still not being accepted by Walgreens. So we want to bring this up and let people know that if you take your prescription there, you are going to end up paying more. It's, excuse me, it's still considered a non-network pharmacy. Now, there are actually some other alternatives in town. First and foremost, I'll put a plug in for our med group and bring it over to our pharmacy. It's filled with great professionals that will take good care of our patients. Um, but also in town, there's a couple other options for you. Walgreens, Rexco, Bunker Hill, and United Not Walgreens. I knew I was going to do that too. Walmart. Other side of town. Um, that's the other one that you can actually take it to. Now, there is some additional information that just came out this week, and that is actually that your co pays are going to be actually increasing when you take it to a network pharmacy or a non network pharmacy outside of base. Again, as always, best place during duty hours is the night group. It's free for you, and wait times are actually less than Walmart. Um, but your copays are going to be going up for your standard brand name drugs up about nine dollars. 
for the drugs they don't typically carry, they call them non-formulary, the things that they have to order special, the, that price is going up from $19 to $44. Similar changes for those that use the home prescription. We actually order it and it comes in. Prices are going to be increasing for that as well. If you have questions on any of that or anything to do with the pharmacy benefit, please feel free to call our team, 481-5190. Five one zero nine. Thank you. Uh, if you give them a call, let them know what the issue is. We'll direct you over to the right person. Uh, the second thing I want to talk to you about was patient travel. If I show of hands, how many people here know that when you leave Altus for a medical appointment, you can get paid? Oh, that's a good number. So I want to break it down into two different categories for you. First is active duty. Active duty, we're simple. We're going to pay you per mile, fifty-five cents per mile that you drive there and back. Active duty family members, dependents, it's a little bit different. We will reimburse you for actual expenses. So here's how this works. Uh, we'll pay you for the gas that you use from Altus to your location if you're going over 100 miles. So that's the first caveat. You've got to make sure you're going over 100 miles. So those of you that do a lot for medical appointments, fortunately we can't reimburse you for that. Uh, but if you're going over 100 miles, fill up your gas tank before you leave town. Keep your receipt. You're going to hear that about three times. Keep your receipt. When you come back, fill up your gas tank again and keep your receipt. Well, while you're out of your medical appointment, if you eat, keep your receipt for that as well. Call our team, we'll take, we'll take care of you, explain how to go ahead and submit that information. But you can be reimbursed for that. Also, just to bring this up, um, if you're traveling with a child that has a medical appointment, food and that kind of thing is reimbursed as well. Any questions on TRICARE, on your benefits, any of that stuff, please feel free to give us a call at 5109, excuse me, 481-5109. We'll be happy to help you out. Okay. Um, so open forum on uh, questions. I don't think we have that many microphones um, out there, but we'll get you on or you can come up here and use this one, whichever way you want to do it. Uh, let, me, let me hit a topic that I got probably the most questions on, and that's, that's hay fees. Um, I just responded to a, a request for information from Senator Enhoff's office on the issue of hay fees downsizing. And my, here's my response, and then I'll, I'll let uh, Michelle fill in details and particulars. So what has happened is the base theater has closed. The reason the base theater has closed is because as Data was provided to me from about 2004. Every year, there have been losses in excess of $10,000. So we have all of those losses on day-to-day -day operations. Added to that is the requirement, starting in January, to switch to a digital format. The equipment cost for AFES would be $100,000 to $120,000 to make that switch. It's just economically infeasible to continue to operate the base theater. We own the base theater. They left behind all of the equipment that uh, was previously there. So there's still a projector, there's still a screen, there's still uh, popcorn and sodas. That's all ours now. And uh, Chief is already working with a couple of uh, the squadrons who want to go in there and figure out how to show movies and how to, sh how to have an event. And that's open for base-wide use. If any unit comes and wants to do something there, for their unit, it's, it's ours, let's go do it. So that's back to us. The other part is, what are we doing with AFES, the store? So the store has shrunk the square footage because the sales do not uh, justify and the merchandise movement does not justify the time, effort, and inventory spent on that square footage. The bulk of their profits and sales occur in the shop at and fortunately or unfortunately, it's largely cigarettes, alcohol, and gasoline. So good job on, on all this stuff. Uh, I, I, I buy the alcohol, I buy the cigarettes. But that's where the sales are. These are fiscal realities. We are seeing the th same things happen off base, and we're seeing an adjustment on base to some of these fiscal realities. The, the bottom line question that I, I talk to my commanders about is, is this impacting our airmen in a negative way. And I think the answer that we get back from that is that it's 
not onerous, it's not difficult, but it is inconvenient. If there are airmen that don't have an ability to drive, we can figure that out. We just need to know about it. But we do have stores downtown, we do have a theater downtown. So it is inconvenient, it is a change in the level of service, and it's not where we want to go, but fiscal realities have driven us there. So that's, that was my answer back uh, to Senator Anhoff's office. Now, if, for particular questions about the about AFIS and, and the operation and the future, I will say, in partnership, what they have offered is to keep an ongoing eye on the operation there. And if we have population growth and we have business growth that justifies moving the walls back out, they are willing to be flexible with that and offer items that uh, they believe and we believe can sell and move through there. In, in light of all of this, and, and AFIS provides us $20,000 in excess of $20,000 per month for our NAP administrative personnel, which essentially allows us to run a good portion of our activities on base. So that we benefit from that NAP dividend even though we don't contribute that much to the NAP dividend. We contribute a lot, and I think we do a lot online, and evidently through alcohol and cigarettes and gas. Um, but it's not to that extent. We, we benefit from the overall NAP dividend generated uh, service-wide. So you know, certainly good news and, and appreciation of AFIS for providing that. So I, I know there's probably some particulars out there. Michelle, I'll let you uh, get up the regional manager out from uh, Lawton. Do you want to go ahead and talk? Sure. I any, any questions okay. first? If not, you can some comments. Actually, that'd be the best place for me to start. Though I know, I know you have questions, and I know this has been a difficult situation for the community. Our goal is to make this transition as easy as possible. So I guess specific questions will be the first thing, if anyone has any. Spence, I started out for Springer from Nice Info OSS. What uh, is the current state with the floor space of uh, the VX going to stay the same, and we're going to currently keep the clothing sales as it is? At this moment, what you see as floor space will will stay the same. That being said, the, the space that we formerly occupied isn't being converted or anything else. So you, it, it will still be available should a demand arise for it. I wanted to highlight something really quickly before I do another question too. We've really, really tried to heavily promote our shuttle program, and I know there's folks at Alpha's using it. I guess because every time I see my courier, he has mattresses, so I think it's mattresses a lot. Um, but the folks are shuttling orders back and forth from Port Sale, and we do. He comes twice a week, so we're doing a big business in that. I realize it's not ideal. Some of the stuff is see and touch, and you you want to see and touch it, and so on. But I do encourage you to use that. I know there are folks using that. Yeah. Uh, Chris on air, command of the board. Um, as we look at ways that you might slowly bring merchandise back, is there a good venue, like we say we have a product we think that we do well and that agents can make money on? What's like a critical mass point or, you know, we've had some requests that said, you know, if there were some high end items maybe we couldn't get on the local economy, like, I'm going to say, I need makeup, so you know, I'll use that. I might need it, but I'll use it. We're brought in some, some high end products, I think, you know, and that's just an example that there might be some things that we could offer that would be beneficial on profit for APs. Is, is there a venue or what's the, uh, what's the appropriate way to follow up good suggestions like that? I think the best way, probably, so that there's a written trail and we can look for patterns and so on, is our customer comment system. And you can reach that through your ICE system or directly from shopmyexchange.com. Um, there's also a manual way to do it if you want to fill out a comment card in the store. I know people don't like to do that much anymore, though. But, but that would be the ideal way. I, I agree with you that there are, there are some isolated items. The, the hard piece is, is a lot of those prestige companies don't necessarily want to do business in like a convenience store format. Um, the Apples, Victoria's Secrets of the World, Coach, and so on, and, and that's the hard piece there. Although we might be able to sell those two or three items, 
our sales patterns are solidly 7-Eleven and they don't necessarily want to be there. We can always look at that though. As far as comments, did you guys start the Facebook page we talked about? Is that up and running yet? We have our, our worldwide Facebook page. We okay. we have and we're it's monitored. Um, anything specific to Altus that's not you know uh, related to a worldwide comment or something get, gets forwarded to me. But we don't have our own um, monitored Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, real quick, so you're talking about the transportation the bus going back a couple times a week. Mm -hmm. um, how? What's the process for the people if they want to go in there and order something or to find out if it's in stock? I mean, they go to the customer service desk or are you supposed to go to the cash register? I mean, can you kind of lay out the picture of how we're supposed to get utilize the services that are being provided? I, ideally, ideally, the cashier could help you if you have any problems with the person at the at the checkout helping you, or maybe they don't understand, or you need more clarification. We always have at least one duty manager in the building, normally two or three. So they can always get you that information. If you wanted to call for it still and get detailed information about a product that might be there or not, may not be there, the exchange number there is 580-351-0504 in their customer service area field calls from a lot of smaller installations for, for things like that. Is there a possibility of way of you having a shuttle service from Altus to Fort Sill on a regular basis? Like on a we weekend? have a merchandise shuttle service. I don't have any way to move people or any authorization to do that. But we do have a twice a week courier bringing merchandise. Ma'am, I'm Sarah Campbell, uh, first owner of Train Squadron. Just to follow up on Chief Fish's question though, is there a way that we could have it explained here in this forum how that process works? Or do we need to go to the customer service desk or the cashier after this to talk about it? Just you would identify whatever item you were looking for. Um, I'll use a dryer, for example. Say you want a basic low-end dry dryer and you need it quickly. Just you want to go to the cashier and they'll get a manager if it's something beyond their, their level of expertise. And they make contact with Fort Sale to see what they have in stock and what we can get you in is that limited to just the larger, you've talked about appliances and mattresses, or can we get specific with smaller products as well? A absolutely anything can move. Like I said, I just use mattresses in these, as an example because every time I see the courier here, he seems to be full of mattresses. But I know people are using it for a lot of other things. Thank you. I see the Q-Rick coffee makers a lot. I think people have taken advantage of that. Hi, I'm Laura Shank with Spouse and a base resident. Um, you guys have a corner on the market at the risk of sounding like a boozy mother <laughs> of being the only place I can go and buy bottled wine with my kids and tell before dinner. But I feel as though the selection that you have offered is shrinking in the BX. And I've heard rumors that I could order like a case of something, but I'm not that good at budgeting, and sometimes I just want a skinny girl margarita <laughs> once, and I was wondering if it, how would I go about doing that, or do you have any plans to expand your alcohol availability? Well, first of all, skinny girl is a great example. I know you just used it as an example, but that's one of the best-selling items in America now, so we should never be out of that, and, and we'll make sure of that. Um, you can always request those through our shuttle program. Um, or if you see something, you know, um, you carry Skinny Girl Peach, and I'd rather have Skinny Girl Lemon or something, that, that's easy enough you know, for us to manage. We can always do things like that. Um, and with good sales, that would become a permanent part of the stock. So, so like, I would go make a, a request, like, did you guys start stocking this? Mm -hmm. And maybe that would be considered. Then I just want to have Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and if you're not if you're not getting good answers, again, we, we always have managers right in there that have a different level of expertise about what's available and how quickly we can get it. Okay. The, the alcohol piece is pretty easy, though. And again, the best sellers, you know, the skinny girls, the crown royals, and so on, should always be there. Okay. Thank you. Mark Reagan, 970 test. I just have one question ah. with regards to the closure of the center. Oh. Tire hazard warranty, they close down the tire shop. 
What we do is we, we basically will send you downtown and pay, and pay you for it. You can go on your own and bring back the receipt, or we can make arrangements for you to go, and we reimburse the company. For that. And we have a couple of uh, shops that have already done that process. It's fun pretty easily. And, and sales and traffic of 30 years ago. So, so it's been a decision that's a long time coming. As for the categories that we have, um, there was careful analysis done to what was actually moving and what wasn't. And some of it was surprising for me too. The, the statistic that shocked me the most is if you added up all our clothing sales from every category, footwear, sunglasses, cosmetics, jewelry, stationery, luggage, linens and sporting goods, you equal their soda sales. That, that was a huge, huge eye opener when I looked at that. It's just a very, very strong convenience store business. At the time that we made the decision, 83% of your sales were occurring in the express portion of the store. 43% are gas, just to, to kind of keep things in perspective. Why is it just a clothing sales store? There's no light in the whole store. I mean, that's the expense in itself. And not any of the other items. I mean, that seems like it would be, you know, understandable to us than to be just, you know, a few items. It's like you have a convenience store and you have a clothing sales store. Don't put any of the rest of the items out there because that's a, you know, that's a plus to me. I'm, I'm sorry. And, and for us to be able to help you to be a better, you know, um, business, it's a shock that it was just all of a sudden closing down. Everybody's like, what are those other walls are coming up? Was this, uh, you know, we can help you be a better business if you want the help, but I don't know that Aikens wants the help because you would have come to us, would have, you know, put it out there. We might be closing, you know, this business, this business, you know, how can we, what can we do for you? It's good to be where, you know, we can advertise they're there for us, but you you know, obviously you're not overseas yet, but this is a long time and you're not. So I'm just, Sad for everybody. It's a shame. The, the items we did keep though are there because of sales. We're just to we're we will arbitrarily remove them just to be a clothing sales store. Those are price if, price if those items, items like are that, those are point you know, those are the price point items that always sold in the past. Those are the high churn items. 
what was looked at, we ran an analysis of what actually was selling, and those are the items, the categories that you see that are still there are there because they were selling. I can, I can add a little bit to where all this is coming from. Um, I'm in the, my husband's in the 54, um, and I can and a few weeks ago, knowing that town hall meeting was coming up, mm -hmm. I posted on our Facebook page, you know, spouses were going to be having this town hall meeting. What are your comments? What are your suggestions? What do you like? What do you dislike? And so on and so forth. And so over 120 comments later, um, I've worked the past few days to create um, lists of different categories of comments from our spouses. And, and what Kim is, is alluding to is, we have all kinds of great suggestions about how this DX could make a lot of money because we know what we want and we know what we order on Amazon and we know what we drive to Fort Still for their DX store. And we would rather have all those items in our account. Absolutely. And so um, I have typed up all of these suggestions. If I need to do it, Thank you. If I need to do it some other way, I'll be glad no, to. No, this is wonderful. Um, but this has taken, you know, quotes um, anonymously, but all from a, a pretty diverse population of spouses. And um, I think if you were to implement these, you could open up your store back up and you could have a profitable store. We don't want to drive out of town if we don't have to. We don't want stuff to be put on a shuttle. You know, we don't want to have to order from Amazon if we don't have to. And this is a, represents a pretty good group of people, and, and they're telling you basically, if you will have these items, and if you will have these things, I will give you my money for these items. And then we wouldn't have this happen. I appreciate this. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? Master or manager from the 58. Remote. Is there any type of plan for leadership to potentially turn this, not necessarily into a remote assignment, but by mileage they can turn it into a remote, where civilians could utilize APs fully instead of what they can now, and maybe get a stipend yeah. or something here. Is there any plan for that at all? I, I don't think you heard me. I think mean, you had stuff going on. Sorry, I, I, was, I, I get it. Yep. Okay, so I think you were asking about a remote and isolated stipend, something like a cold. Correct, correct, because I know some of our civilians, if they're retired, yes, they can use the BX fully, but right now, if they're a, a regular civilian here, okay. they cannot use that. But if you were to turn it into that, they could, correct. Uh, you're talking about a massive policy change. I mean, what remote and isolated does for autism is it gives us additional monies towards our NAF activities. This helps out tremendously. We do not qualify uh, for any sort of active duty or civilian COLA type things. Uh, we do understand the desire for that to help out with some of these things that we have to naturally travel for or we naturally don't get or would have had in a, in a big city. But policy wise, big Air Force policy wise, we don't qualify for remote and isolated status. Um, so I, I just got to note that we're doing a live feed, and we just had a long discussion about um, AFES, and it, what, the live feed cannot pick up one of the comments without microphones. So we'll hand those out, but uh, Jenny and Kim, I'll just kind of hit the high points. What uh, Jenny brought forward was uh, about 120 comments from the spouses out there via Facebook, uh, identifying needs and items and wants with regards to AFES, and Kim was expressing why did AFES close down? Why didn't they communicate the closing down? We have had that commentary, and, and it wasn't that fun, but we did have it, and I agree with you. That needed to get pushed out as uh, educational and informative ways so that we could be ahead of the train, and we could provide inputs on how to change in order to make this profitable. So we have had those discussions, and we're going forward. I rely on AFES and their analysts and their software to tell them what will make money and what will not make money. Going forward, I, I think we're going to need more of us engaged in trying to help solve this problem with AFES. And that is gathering comments and identifying needs and wants that are out there. As we expand the store back out, it will probably take place in a segmented, targeted 
format, i.e. We, we identify baby items. Here are baby items. We get APHES to respond with carrying baby items. We expand the store. We identify lots of Clinique for Chris to use, because we know it'll take a lot. And then we, we, we bring in, you know, so whatever the items are. And then sometimes APHES will go, we hear you, we can't do it. You know, that's going to be a part of the iterative process here. But it's up to us to provide that feedback, partner with APHES, and smartly expand the floor back out based on what it is that we identify, what it is that we need. But the reason that we closed it was because of lack of traffic. And that is unfortunate. I don't like it any more than any of you do either. But it's, so it's going to be up to us to partner with APHES and to identify what's up and then march this thing back out and get it where we need it to be. And we're going to rely on APHES and your professionals to, to help us get there. And, and you know, they have been as responsive as they, they can be. I think APHES is constrained by models. And the models are really focused on probably larger facilities. These, you, go, you, go, you go small and it gets tough. It's tough for big companies to be nimble. That's where we're at. And uh, so we're gonna we're gonna try to help though get us get us back to where we need to be, and we'll definitely get skinny girl margaritas. Okay. All right. More questions for ages. You mentioned a shuttle service for items from uh, Fort Sill to here. Am I correct on that? Is there any way we could possibly turn that, turn it into a shuttle to transport airmen? Because at the training squadron, I know not all of us have cars. It's hard for some of us to get around. And so to get on to do something, is it possible to, trans to transport people and help APs at the same time? That's what my question is. Okay, so the question is, can we utilize the transportation service for goods from Fort Sill to Altus to transport people, airmen, who don't have cars, from Altus to Fort Sill to Junior Shop? I'm afraid I don't have anyone qualified or insured or anything to, to do that kind of transportation. The courier is, you know, driving around in a big panel van all day and going to all the different kinds of facilities and so on, but not really set up to carry people. I don't know if it's something that um, services could do, or I, I, I also know busing is, is a problem sometimes, um, but we don't have any way to move people from the APHIS site. Thank you. Thank you. So the answer from, from our side is we can look into how to do that with our organic assets to help out our airmen. But it is still, um, if, if we are using Air Force assets to bring up AFI's business, I'm going to ask AFI's to get involved in this. You know, if we're really targeting this is a trip for AFI's, then I'm going to ask for AFI's to be involved in helping us solve it. So we'll do a little bit of both. I think immediately if we have a direct need, we can help out there. But I think we'll Okay, anything else on APs? That wasn't that bad, was it? <laughs> yes, go ahead. Sir, uh, Doug Winters from uh, OSS. Uh, this doesn't have anything to do with APHES, but it's, it's similar. If APHES is closed, what's next? Is, is the commissary considering closing? And if so, are we going to have a chance to express our, our desires on that? Okay. So what, what you're asking is, what's the future of Altus Air Force Base if we see something like APHES downsizing? Is that indicative of what is potentially going to happen to Altus Air Force Base as a whole? My opinion, my opinion only, is that Altus Air Force Base remains a unrepeatable asset across the nation. What we do here with training 135 and C-17s 
is not repeatable with regards to our runways, our lack of encroachment, our airspace, and our um, uh, proximity to air refueling tracks, drop zones, and low levels. That is not repeatable across the United States. It is truly a unique asset that provides extremely efficient training for our 135 and C-17s. In addition to that, we are now on the short list for KC-46 FTU base and MOB-1 base, Mobility Operating Base. So that will be looked at in the future. Should another mission come, that would even help solidify further the future of the base. When I talk about proximity to air refueling routes, proximity to uh, low levels, to drop zones, and a pattern that is able to be configured in any way that we desire due to lack of encroachment, what that reduces is fuel costs. And by far, the number one driver in our costs are fuel costs in flying hours. So it is, it's not insignificant that we are efficient with those types of items. If you look out at the other bases across the United States, trying to repeat what we have set up here would be extremely difficult. Having said all of that, this is, uh, these are political decisions as well. So what is decided uh, with Congress and how these things go forward, I can't say. All I can say is from an operational standpoint, Altus Air Force Base is extremely efficient and good at what we do. And we have commitment from our leadership for centralized training today and into the known future. Now, I think we are seeing some small things. And I alluded to that earlier with response to the question about atheism and just fiscal reality. Levels of service are changing. Our budget as DOD is getting tighter. So as we see some downsizing in levels of service, that shouldn't be extremely different than what towns and cities are experiencing across the United States. On some level, all of those things are happening across the U.S. and across DOD installations. I don't think we're completely out of the norm. Uh, for instance, the theaters have closed essentially DOD-wide, uh, with the exceptions of large bases with large populations that have a far different um, economic dynamic than we do. So we're, you know, we're, we're about where everybody else is with regard to some of the downsides that we're seeing. But it's a good question, and I know it's a concern. I know we have we have some 18 members, we have civilians, hey, I'm, you know, I'm, I just started here. I plan to be here for the next 20 or 30 or 40 years. And you know, I, I, think, I think understanding what we bring to DOD and to the nation is very important in that discussion. We, we have quite an asset here without this Air Force Base. Okay, other questions? Sir, uh, my name is John Courtney. I just uh, showed up a few weeks ago on base with the 58. Um, having been through here several times as a student, um, and looking back at, uh, for lack of a better term, fast food options on the base, um, several years ago, there used to be an A&W root beer drive -thru. And passing through a couple years later, that was gone. And now, just showing up recently, I've noticed that the um, I guess it's an Anthony's Pizza slash uh, kind of multifunctional fast food joint that's open four hours a day uh, from 11 to 3. Is that a viable option to bring in uh, maybe something that is uh, competitive, all a subway that serves breakfast and lunch, perhaps dinner, uh, especially on days when the commissary is not open like on Mondays? Okay, so the question is uh, what's going on with the food court and other fast food options here on Vicks? And uh, Paul, I'll let you talk. Um, breakfast and lunch are both options for the, the facility that you have now. Unfortunately, the sales truly don't support it. Um, it. It does about $200 a day. I want to kind of put that in perspective. To, to have a subway, you'd be looking at about $75,000 in sales a month. That would be a typical target subway on a smaller installation. In the food facility, we have just $5,000 a month. We just don't have the traffic to justify a $180,000 investment in construction and equipment to set up a food activity that would be clearly a deep loss operation, unfortunately. Um, 
it's, it's very hard to keep the activity that we have open, and we're committed to doing that as long as there's a need. But, but as far as a, a branded activity or something bigger with the traffic being what it is, it's, it's not a realistic option right now. Sorry. What was the name of the trailer that came out with the uh, Opus? Opus. Opus. So we, there was a request from Apis to bring in Opus House, and he put in a trailer, and uh, he did okay, I think. And so what was offered to him was space in Apis uh, to continue that operation. I believe he declined that. Is that right? He did. Okay. And, um, he also declined it successful operation at Shepherd, so we, we think maybe he has a different business strategy going right now. Right. Now, yeah, so yeah. APES has opened up their that uh, facility to other vendors and has, has actively uh, pushed out um, uh, uh, inputs from, from vendors and no one has taken them up on it due to the sales volume. Um, so, you know, just I hope you enjoy the club. Uh, the club serves a great uh, buffet Monday through Friday with all you can eat steak on Tuesday. But we're soon. I could probably talk to this all day. Uh, but that's, you know, that is again driven by sales volume. You know, so we, we, we talk uh, about APHES, we talk about DECA, we talk about the club, we talk about the golf course. And all of these events depend on us going there and utilizing those facilities. So it is up to us in the end to provide that traffic. Don't go if you don't want to go, but if we want there to be a success with our facilities, it's up to us to traffic them. Our club membership across the base is 16%. I'm not gonna ask, mandate, check on names on club membership, but if we want to create a successful, vibrant, viable club system, which includes the club, the pool, the golf course, it's up to us. What do you get for your $10 a month or less? You get the whole thing. You get to support airmen, who, I think we don't charge airmen, right? $4 for airmen. My $10 goes to help airmen have a place to go. That's what that's the way I look at it as a senior leader. I don't look at the direct payback for me necessarily, but I do understand that if we're all members of this and we all put some skin in the game, we create a better system overall for everybody. So that when it is that Thursday my parents are in town, I want to have somewhere to take them, I can do that. I might not get payoff today, but I know if I invest in this over the long term, I will have something to go to and to be a part of. So I do ask for your help in all of these pieces that are out there to help us make them better. It is up to us sometimes to make that happen. Do you have any more on the fast food? Okay, I have a question here and a question here. Go ahead. Uh, Kevin Burnett from Force Support Squadron. On our food operations that we have on the base, and I'm thinking back off Mr. Baker's too, is uh, we have the bowling center, we have Club Altus, we have the FCC where we have Starbucks, we have Charlie, we could be on the state. All of that, all that is driven by menus and by customer service. If there's something you want to see change, and serve yourself welcome to Altus. If there's something you want to see on our menus, be it bowling, be it uh, what we have here at the club, or at Charlie's, or at the FCC, please let us know. Just uh, Sue Smith is the manager here at Club Altus, also takes care of Charlie's. It also takes care of uh, Starbucks. Mr. Baker takes care of the bowling center. But we want your business. You know, if there's something we're doing that we can do better, please let our activity managers know because we want you in our facilities. And we can change our menus. We can do whatever we can do to provide uh, the best service to you. Okay. Yes. This is scary stuff right here. 
Um, I just wanted to know, like, I use Charlie's. I use the club. I, I mean, we use all of that. It's just about options. Like, we want more options. And it seems like a vicious cycle. I totally understand the bottom line and that it has to make money. But it seems to me, I have not been here that long. I hadn't been here before, so I don't know what was here. But it just seems to me like it's not making money because it's nothing there we want. Like, and it's a vicious cycle. We're not going to get anything because it's not making money, but it's not making money because it's not what we want. So how do we stop that cycle? Get things we want so that we will use them so then it does make money. Like, there's no answer to that question that I think. Good question. Um, so good, I'm going to give the mic to, to Chief. <laughs> I hear you, uh, and that's where that's where I think we have to help ourselves out. What is it that we want? And, you know, what we're talking about here is is the feedback mechanisms. How do we get the feedback, and how do we organize the feedback to make it substantial, to make it count, to make it be heard? You know, those are those are all questions and, and issues that we have to deal with. So. We need to do that. How do we do that? I don't have great answers. I do know that we do have feedback mechanisms as far as questionnaires and, and, and comment cards that we can give to our club services, that we can give to AFIS. What you did with Facebook and gathering comments is perfect. It's, that's the way to reach out. That's, that's where we're at. We need to figure, this is done. We need to figure out how to capitalize on those mediums Ask for and receive feedback. Did you have more on that, Jenny? So the question was, can we establish focus groups? And the answer is yes. The answer is done. And where are we with focus groups? We've talked about a focus group for each of our major activities. We haven't talked about a focus group for APHES, but what you're bringing up is perfect. That's exactly what we need. How are we doing on that, Trent? Yes, sir. We, we periodically do focus groups for, we just did one on golf. We just did one on the club this, this fall. And, and driven uh, were some menu changes, some adjustment in prices, um, and, and even some activity adjustments and what we offer uh, within those two activities. So we can do focus groups on any one of our, our programs, and uh, not necessarily APs or the commissary, but with it for support, uh, that's, that's good for our business, and so we're, we're glad to do that. Okay. So the problem is that we did fo focus groups and you didn't know about it. Right. So we're going to fix that. You're going to know about the focus groups, what they are, and when they meet. And we'll add APs into it. Okay? Great. Put you in charge. Okay. <laughs> I also wanted to add, as far as from the APHIS perspective, I'll always make myself available to spouses groups, fraternity groups, or any units or whatever. I just need a little bit of notice because I, I live at Port Sill and I also have Shepherd Air Force Base. Kind of a road warrior, but I, I will always be available. Where's Deb? Where's Deb? Right. We got it. Yes. Corey Exton, marketing director with Elvis FSS um, for the fourth quadrant. Um, in regards to the focus groups that we did, um, we publicized them on our website. So when we see them again, if you check out Eltis We're getting ready to add Google Plus and Pinterest. So please use those channels to be interactive with us. 
if, um, and I know Jenny and I have just recently talked about doing an uh, ongoing spouse uh, advisory panel like that. But um, please use those channels. They're out there for you guys to be interactive with us because we'll definitely listen to you and what you want. Okay. Thanks, Corey. Myself and the A team members are going, what in the world is Pinterest? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I have a 15 year old daughter, so I know what it is. Okay, what else? Sir, has there been reconsideration on the open hours for the FCC? Because it's kind of silly that the community center is closed on the weekends. And so families in the dead of heat either have a pool or their house, and that's about it. But they don't have any indoor options when we're 115 degrees. Okay, good question. You guys got it? Okay. Uh, it's something we can address. Get it to, everything's basically demand driven. And the numbers historically have shown that that wasn't a consideration. But things change, times change. Feedback received. We'll look at it. Uh, what we will need and ask for is continued engagement and feedback on that. Are we meeting the need? If there is a need not met, such as the FCC not being open at the right hours. How do we provide that? What is the best way to provide that feedback? Is it Facebook? Is it Twitter? How, how do we do that? What's the best way for the community? Um, right now, it's Facebook, but uh, we're just getting Twitter up and going. Google Plus and Pinterest are coming. They should be online at the end of the month. Um, we'll definitely see a marketing push um, around base by the end of the month. We're getting ready to also redesign the website. So there's a lot of changes coming. Um, also, I know Miss Jenny Lanier, she is my husband's squadron commander, so therefore my squadron commander's wife. And she will definitely be a big force in helping organize a spouse panel. But, yeah. um, Great. If, if so, any, good. Sorry, if anybody wants um, to set up a focus group or has something y'all want to say that you want us to listen, my direct extension is 1310. Please call my office. We would definitely be happy to set up a meeting and see what we can do. Okay, great. So the FSS answer is utilize our online media, which is Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and whatever else you mentioned. But some of that isn't fully mature, and you expect to see improvements. But still, the need is feedback. That's, that's the overall. Okay, great. What else? Yes. Sir, currently the CDC... Um, doesn't give what we would call a compensatory day for IE, like a month. So during the holidays, if you were to use the CDC and you go on, on a vacation, you still have to pay that week you went on leave or two weeks or whatever you did. But the other base, bases that I've been to, every month you, you get eight hours of, of free day off. Their answer um, to us was, it's too hard to track. And I wondered if that can be put in place potentially here at Altus. When other bases do it, obviously it works. Um, you know, it's the thing of why having to pay when I am not there. Okay. So the question is, can the CDC provide compensatory days for months that have holidays? And the interesting part to me is that other bases do it that way. Uh, the answer that I know for ours is the pricing that is pushed out is based on a full year of attendance, utilizing work days and holidays to track all of that. But if we're doing it at other bases, the question would be, has that already been figured into the pricing? Or, or too hard isn't the right answer. So we need, to, we need to go back and research that. Okay, good question. Go ahead. Oh. Sir Airman Jones from PA. Uh, a few weeks ago, I was walking back from the gym to dorm 213, and I about got swiped by a car. And going around base, I've noticed that most of the crosswalks aren't lit. And like she was saying about, uh, well, I guess she left, the training students, a lot of them don't have cars. You see them walking everywhere all the time. Is there something we can do about maybe getting lit lights for our crosswalks? Because it seems that there's lights other places, but as soon as you see a crosswalk, it's dark. Well, that's a, that's a safety concern, and we will uh, we'll take a look at it. Do I have my safety guy in here? We'll go out and take now. You have to understand that within fiscal constraints, what can we actually do? 
uh, with regards to lighting all of the crosswalk areas. But if you see one that warrants lighting due to lots of foot traffic, then uh, we need to take a look at what we can do. Okay. Thanks. Go ahead. Uh, Greg Price, County Civic Maintenance. Uh, my question, sir, is that we've been talking in BX Commissary. I want to know what our contingency plan is for sequester, furlough, etc. If we don't get paid, we can't spend money nowhere. Okay. What do we got, sir? Okay. So the question is sequestration, fiscal cliff, continuing resolution, the Taxpayer Relief Act, Act of 2012 that pushed the decision into March. What does all of that mean? Chief? <laughs> <laughs> Any more BX questions? Good question. We are seeing the, the results of Congress in action and they approve our budget. Our budget is not approved and the continuing resolutions are driving where we are today. I have received several letters over the past week from Department of Defense down through AETC on planning actions in the event agreements don't get reached and sequester goes into effect. Those actions include all of the above. It includes furloughs, it includes hiring freezes, it includes relief of temporary workers, it includes uh, cut in flying hours, it includes elimination of TDYs, all of the above is included. The reason that I am getting those memos is because that's what we in the Department of Defense do. We plan for the reality that faces us. That's what, that's what we're doing right now. It doesn't mean that we have implemented any of those, but we, what we are always tasked to do to Congress is to give our best military advice. And by planning for these things and outlining the exact actions that will have to take place should a sequester kick in, we are presenting our best military advice to let them know here are exactly the types of cuts and the types of things that will happen if sequester kicks in. And it includes all of you. Whether that's going to happen or not, you'll have to ask the chief. <laughs> now the other avenue that we all have is to keep our congressional leaders informed about how we feel about how all of this is going. And so you know, that avenue is always open for any issue. If this would be another one if, if you feel so inclined to give your feedback. Does that answer the question? That's a big question. I was kind of saving that for the end, or I figured the question would come up at some point. Um, but it's really, it's prudent planning. And that's what we do. Other questions? Go ahead. Okay, uh, we can and we do. Uh, we've, we've worked hard to accommodate all of the different needs. We hold lots of classes. We have different rooms for different types of activities. I, I recall some, uh, somebody was powerlifting recently and they were about to damage the floor, so gym staff went in and built a couple of, uh, of additional padding to protect the floor so we could continue Olympic-type lifting. If there's a desire to do other types of workouts, 
uh, yoga, Pilates, uh, CrossFit, all of those things. What do you need? Let us know what you need, and we'll work together there. I think we have good utilization out of both basketball, gymnasium areas, whether it's basketball or indoor soccer or volleyball or core class, those large classes. So I probably wouldn't seek to modify either one of those in any permanent fashion, but fully open to your needs uh, to support what you want to do in the gym. And you know, if we're not if we're not getting there, then let's figure out how to do it. So, you know, again, ask for feedback, and then, and then we can help respond. Yes, sir. Uh, another thing too, just want to make sure everyone knows, Air Force, of course, everything's driven by funding, is they contacted us about doing a kiosk for uh, the fitness center to where it'd be you could go in and dial in what type of program you'd like to have and then it has a slide projector and everything else to where it'd have an audio visual type instructor but you could do a lot of different programs in there. Uh, Air Force just came out with that they're going to try to put at least one at each Air Force base. We haven't seen it here at Alphys but it would include some of the programs that we're talking about. The thing is the fitness center want to make sure everything, everybody knows a lot of different bases do a spin-off of CrossFit because Air Force don't recognize CrossFit uh, uh, as a program. We had some of the history of people getting hurt and everything else. So, but there has been spin-offs. I believe Mr. Leonard here does a core class with the commander. So there is things that's available, but if there's other things you'd like to see, please let us know, like the commander said. Okay, thanks. And it's not a core class with the commander. It's a core class that the no, commander no, no, sometimes goes to. You attend it. Yeah, and about 10 minutes into it, I'm dying. I'm wishing I wasn't there. But I don't want an airman going off base, spending $8 a month, that he doesn't have to spend. If you make the choice, great. But if I don't want you to have to do that. So how do I help? $80 a month. That's more than eight. So let's, let's, let's figure out how we can help. Colonel? Because I think one thing that everybody in the audience is going to know at the end is that if you submit an idea, how do you know an idea has been submitted? This goes for uh, APs, this goes for FSS programs, and how do you get feedback if it hit the market or if it didn't? I think a lot of times you are asking questions, but I think the hard part that we don't get back out is, has the question been asked and has it been answered? And so, I, so I would just bring that to the table for everybody, because we're asking you for lots of input, but I think we owe the response to the greater mass is to get that information back out to everybody that one, that service or request has been asked and, and we have answered the mail on it. Because great list of 120 things for APs, but what will happen with that list? You know, how do we take a new item if it's been requested? How do we say that more customers want that brought on if we know we're just doing it one at a time? So I would say from everybody that's in here that's answering the question, their support and answer your questions is that we probably we need to do a better job of just getting the questions and letting you know that they're out there and that they're actually being answered. All right. Me again. Awesome. <laughs> That's great. Me again. Um, with regards to the fitness center, I know as a spouse and with my spouses that I talk to, a big concern we have there is the kids' room, which we use, which is awesome. Um, for kids who can be entertained on their own and but we have a lot of spouses who need some sort of child care there is not I mean the CDC offers but it's ten dollars so basically you're paying ten bucks for two hours for your kids to stay there for one class which seems a little bit ridiculous to me per kid so if you have two or three kids like that's a lot of money if we want our spouses to be able to work out I mean our active duty get to take time during the day to go work out they don't have to worry about well they don't okay well, they, they can work on their lunch break, I guess. So there is a time that they could go work. Um, for a lot of spouses, there is not a time that they can go and work out. Um, if they have their kids with them, is there a room that we could do to have maybe a spouse co-op where we could take turns watching children? Or maybe we could hire, I know spouses are willing to pay, they're not willing to pay $30 or $40 for one workout class for a kid, but $5 for a workout class to pay for your child if enough people did that. I mean, that could be a decent income. I just wonder if there, if that has been looked at, if that is something that could be taken care of, if there's a room that could be used or just looked into as a feasible option other than the one child care room where there's a couple machines you can use, which is good, but I think we could do better. Yeah, 
agree. <laughs> Certainly that. Certainly that's something we can look into, and obviously the Air Force has standards when it comes to child care, and, and, and so we would have to look into it. Space, of course, is also the issue, but uh, I, 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 understand, I understand the cost that comes with it, with the CDC. You know, the, the CDC is, is uh, probably the best option we have, but obviously it, it, it's not the cheapest option. You know, I, I know that much. It, but, um, from the fitness center standpoint, we'll see what options we have there. It, obviously, space is an issue, but uh, uh, absolutely, that's that's some good feedback, and uh, we'll pass the pass the information on. Okay, okay. thanks. I got a, I've got a couple of uh, inputs that I received earlier. I can just address those if we don't have any other questions. Go ahead. Sir Major Regan, uh, XP, uh, just one. One question for our commissary folks. Um, I know that uh, you know when you go into the commissary, you're looking around, and it's a lot of stuff that's in direct competition with uh, Walmart and United and stuff like that. Uh, there's a lot of us here, especially with uh, kids, uh, not me personally, but a lot of us have kids with special dietary needs. Uh, this this commissary really does not stock a lot of those, uh, you know, gluten-free, casein-free uh, kids with uh, or folks that are vegan, especially. Um, just wondering if we can have this, you know, expand. If you're looking to sell more, let's not compete with you. Okay. So specialized items at the council. Do you want that one? We were wondering if you were going to get asked any questions. Get asked. <laughs> um, we don't at the Alpha's Commissary decide what items are going to be carried at the Alpha's Commissary. Again, like any organization, we have a sales directorate that looks at everything. Um, they not only look at how it sells in other commissaries in DECA, but they look at how it sells on the outside markets as well, before they decide that they're going to put an item in a commissary. Unfortunately, Alphys is one of the smallest commissaries there is. So we will never carry the amount of items that a Fort Sill or a Fort Bliss or even the overseas commissaries carry. Overseas is different because there is a consolidated customer base with, like you said, very little other places to go to get American foods. So it forces the masses of military and dependents overseas to shop at those commissaries. That doesn't happen here. And as much as you guys will say, if you carry those items, we'll shop there. I go down to Walmart all the time. And I talk to airmen that are in their uniforms, and they probably think I'm a maniac. Because I will say to them, do you know that you can shop at the commissary? Do you know that you can save money? Do you know that you can request items that aren't carried on the shelf? And we will do our utmost best to get you what you want. I want to be able to satisfy everybody. Can I? Not going to happen. There's so many constraints about when you're going to carry an item. Is it a dated item? Are you going to sell it before it expires? We sell to you what we bring into the commissary at cost. We are a government entity, which means we can't lose money. So we can't bring in a case of 48 or something that's dated, and five customers have said, I'll buy that, because we're going to lose money. Now, there are other options that are open. You bring me the items that you want. I mean, I can't go to my director and say, they want more vegan items. They need to know what particular items you're talking about. There have been a lot of items that customers have brought in to me that we've been able to get. There have been a lot of items that customers have brought in to me that we aren't able to get. And again, unfortunately, and I know you're probably tired of hearing this, sales drive that. If I bring it in, and, it's, and, and we, every 30, 60, and 90 days, we monitor movement of every item. Every six to eight months, we do what we call category reviews, where we look at items and we say, OK, you know, this really isn't selling all that well. Let's bring in a new item and see if that will sell better. But customers are so fickle. 
I mean, I can look at somebody and say, okay, you're buying this today. 30 days from now, it's not moving off my shelf because some company has brought in some item that's supposed to be better than that. And unfortunately, again, because we work at a government agency, we don't seem to move product or get new products in as quickly as a Walmart or a I'm going up against the sales director that's located in Fort Lee, Virginia, who is going to give the final approval of that. Now, another option that's open, and I know this is really hard because families aren't as big as they used to be and they're smaller, but if you know that an item is carried at Fort Phil, and I don't carry it at Alphys, I can bring it into Alphys by the case, but unfortunately I have to sell it by the case. So what I do have is I have a group of wives who buy these certain items and, and they share them amongst themselves. They'll buy a case of like 24 and each one of them will take six. Now I can do that, but look at the size of Alpha's commissary and look at the size of Fort Phil. You can't expect them to carry every item they carry. I we got room in the VA. <laughs> Stop thinking like that. I hope Chi's comment didn't go out over the net. Spinach, bananas. Maybe yeah. you want to explain that. Bread. Okay. okay. Suppliers supply us with things. Okay. The chicken. We just went through a horrible, horrible phase with chicken. Where for almost ten days, 
We didn't have any chicken. Okay? Again, we're placing orders three times a week. If the orders aren't coming in, there's nothing I can there's nothing at store level I can do. Have I reported it to our headquarters? Have I called the Tyson company? Yes, I have. And the response is they're working on getting you your order. Chicken is a very hard thing because chicken doesn't come by itself. Chicken is docked from one supplier to another supplier and then on our truck that comes three times a week. So if any one of those deliveries misses, we unfortunately we get a truck that has no chicken on it. Um, produce right now is difficult. We deal with one produce company where Walmart deals with an ungodly amount of produce companies. But because of the weather conditions over the summer and now the weather conditions now, the quality of produce is decreasing. When it hits our back door, if it's not what we call genuine quality, we don't accept it. I don't think you want us selling you items that aren't of the best quality. has been a problem when one to bread went out. And that was not only a problem with us, that was a problem with the W store as well. Because what happens is the bread companies that we have make their orders up ahead of time. Well, they made their orders up not realizing that one bread was going to go out. So you should be noticing that a lot better now because now they have increased their orders to cover what one to bread wasn't covering or what wasn't delivered. So there shouldn't be that problem any longer. And normally, when we find a problem, I mean, we address it right away. If it doesn't come in on one truck, I'm not going to call my distributor and say I didn't get it today. If it doesn't come in on the second truck, because I only get two trucks a week for the majority of the stuff that you find in the middle of the store. So if it's not on that second truck, I'm calling saying, this has been ordered, where is it? But again, customers, I don't want to use the word fickle, but it's very true. If you work in an organization where you're trying to forecast what a customer is going to buy, it's very difficult to do it. And I'm going to just go off to the side for a little bit to try to explain on some of the reasons why we run out of items that we run out of. Squadrons. <laughs> who run their own little snack concerns. We have told them over and over and over again, if you will come to me and tell me what you want, candy bars, Gatorade, Little Debbie snack cakes, some of the bread items, if you will tell me what you want, not only will I order them, but I will pull them and have them set aside for you when you come to pick them up. And I can tell you, day after day after day, I see people from squadrons and they were shopping carts full of Little Debbie, of candy bars where they've gone to the shelf and taken the entire case of candy bars off the shelf, put it in their basket. Now, I'm only getting two orders a week. So if they do that, I don't have those products for the customers that are coming in there every day. So that's causing a problem. In produce, I have people that are coming in and buying cases of spinach and cases of bananas. 
If we know ahead of time that that's going to happen, we'll order extra. We'll have it on hand for you. But again, it's, it's got to be not only the feedback from me to you telling you what we're going to do, but it has to come from the customers at some point saying, you know, I'm having a big barbecue and I'm going to buy three cases of boneless, skinless chicken breasts. Okay, I'll have it for you. The club. <laughs> the club will turn around and say to me, I want a case of chicken. And I'll say, okay, we'll buy it for you. They come over to the store and they take three cases of chicken. So now I have no chicken for my customers who come in every day. And we cannot refuse a customer. We can't do that. So it's, it takes a little bit of everybody having a little bit of consideration for the other people that are shopping at the commissary at the same time. Now I'm not saying that's all of the items that were out of the lot, but, but that does play into it a lot. And like I said, if I order three cases of something on my truck that comes on Monday and it doesn't come, and I'm out of it on the shelf, I'm going to be out of it until the truck comes on Thursday. There, you know, there's nothing I can do. I don't get an interim truck or anything like that. They don't send me a truck for the items that they should. And unfortunately, we're pulling it from the same distributors that Fort Sill and Tinker and all of them are. So if they're pulling 15 cases, and I'm pulling three, they're going to get their 15 cases before I get my three because they get trucks every day. So, I mean, we do the best we can. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Kayla. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um, so, who is ordering the case of spinach in bananas? Because I want to give you a medal. Now, when it comes to candy bars, I want you to put those on the water tower. And then anybody who's going to buy those, they got to climb the water tower to get the candy bars. Let me, let me cover a couple of quick comments here. Uh, I had a question about base water supply and the quality of the water. What I can tell you is, is it's been a tip, difficult road for the city of Alphys and, and the water supply system. However, it has not exceeded EPA standards in any measurable degree that we know of. It doesn't sometimes maybe taste like you would like it to or, or smell like you would, but as far as we know, and we test it frequently, uh, it has not exceeded any standards uh, uh, that, that we're given guidelines um, Water? Okay. Um, I know that the city of Alpha City you pay your utility bill, you get like a call or an email about water quality, water conservation issues, but we don't always get those if you're a resident on base. Like I didn't get one yesterday, even though everybody else I know who was off base got one about the water. And this is like a heads up your water is going to be brown. Is there a way that like on Facebook, Balfour could distribute that information or FSS could? Okay. Uh, you can sign up on the City of Altus website to get those automatic. Okay. I'm sorry it took this meeting for you to find that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, the notice on the water yesterday was there was a fault in the uh, water line for the Mountain Park Water District to get our water out of uh, Tom, Street, Res Tom Steed Reservoir. Their 36 inch line comes in uh, to the city water supply. When that line went down yesterday because of a break, we had to be drawing water out of the alternate source, which is the city reservoir. Please do not get scared about the water quality because whatever source they take it out of, it has got to go through the city filtration plant first and you will get treated water. Yes, because of the source, it may look a little different, taste a little different, but it's still completely safe to drink, so please don't worry about the water quality. That's okay, and that's coming from an engineer. He knows his stuff. Yes, Thank you. Yeah, I think uh, BBC for the on base folks is trying to take on a replication of any uh, notification from the city of Altus to help out our own mix box. But uh, for those off base, you can sign up at the website. Okay, any other questions? 
uh, talked uh, water supply uh, rumor because I don't want anybody to walk out of here thinking that the boar's head argument stopped. Uh, <laughs> Bonnie, only in a town hall could you get that. That's awesome. Gosh. Um, the, the fact that remote and isolated status is dependent upon the south gate access, that is not the case. Uh, so it's just a rumor that has been around as long as I've, I've been here. Um, so that is not the case. And we had, we had some uh, concerns about uh, road signs, traffic, speeding, those types of things. Um, we're vigilant. Our security forces are out there all the time. They're watching. If there are additional needs, let us know. And that's, that's what I can say to you. You know, uh, when it comes to our housing areas, we are extremely safe. We have 15 mile per hour and 20 mile per hour. I don't know if the kids off base are faster, but it's 25 miles an hour if you're off base. So, you know, we, we are very safe uh, on base and we pay attention to this. If you're having a problem, we, uh, forum we heard about some dogs running loose on base. We didn't know about it. We don't know about it. Uh, not something that uh, we're able to take on and fix. But that's what this is for. That's what this open forum is for. That's what our base leadership is for, that's what all of our helping agencies are involved in. And it is listening to each of you, figuring out what it is we need to do, what the problems are out there, and, and to the best of our ability, fixing it. And if we can't, we let you know about it. I think one of the takeaways for me, and I, and I hope for you, uh, DECA and AFES, is uh, since we're involved in the people business, and times have changed with regards to media, we have the ability to push in rather than requiring you to pull it. And it is on us to put it on our plate to push you the right kinds of info. If you're asking me a lot of questions, in a lot of these cases, it's on us to have pushed that to you. So I know my leadership team has taken notes in here on how do we better serve you by pushing you information so we're not relying on you to always ask us. I don't want to put that on you. It's our responsibility to get it out to you and, and answer those questions. So we've done this for about an hour and a half. My motion's wear off. Uh, would be more than happy to stay behind. I'll take any you know, individual questions if you didn't want to ask for it, uh, uh, ask the question in a large group. I appreciate your attendance. I appreciate what each of you does uh, to make us better. We've, uh, we've got a great community here. It's small, so it creates challenges. We have some people out there who love spinach, and, you know, but we got to adjust to that, and that's about communication. And it's also about coming together and helping solve as a community some of these problems or needs uh, that we have to make it even better for this group. Thank you all for your attendance and your attention. Thank you.